Alien Syndrome was released for the arcade in 1987, and a year later it found several ports, including the NES, although it didn't get the NES stamp of approval, putting it into the category of unlicensed games for the system. I'm not sure why. You would think that maybe it was because the game was published by Tengen, who wasn't exactly the best of friends with Nintendo after all their legal battles over Tetris, but that whole debacle wouldn't start until a year later, so I don't know. It's an overhead shooter where you take control of a soldier, or soldiers, as there's a co-op mode, and gun down various aliens with the goal to rescue your captured comrades. Although I have to question the competency of these quote-unquote comrades who just stand around waving at you while there are no hazards anywhere near them, but oh well. You have 12 buddies to rescue per level, and you have a time limit of 240 seconds, or 4 minutes, to get them all. Plus head for the exit of the stage before encountering the boss. You still have to beat the time limit after reaching the boss, but the game does throw you a bone by attacking on an additional minute. The game obviously drew inspiration from the Alien film franchise. Whether you classify it as ripping them off, borrowing from the formula, or simply paying homage, for better or worse, Alien is clearly the source material. The controls are pretty smooth and responsive, but aiming can be a bit tricky. Despite the fact that you can aim in eight directions, including diagonally, sometimes your target lies in that sweet spot in between your possible lines of fire, and you have to finagle your position around to get your aiming correct. It can also get awkward when you're trying to retreat. Turning yourself back around to re-aim your weapon brings you a hair closer to your nemesis, so you're always going to want to give yourself some extra space. Another pain is the fact that you can't fire rapid shots, or at least you can't fire more than one at once. If you fire a shot after a bullet has already left your gun, then the old projectile will disappear out of thin air to make room for the new one. I guess that's not as bad as having to wait for the bullet to hit a target or fly off screen before you can use your next one, but it still makes it a pain in the ass if you want to fire rapidly at something. You have to time your attack so that you make a connection instead of just unloading. It kind of takes away from the arcade element. So yeah, there are some flaws in the mechanics, and it's definitely more noticeable in the boss battles. You do get weapon upgrades, although it's a lot like Contra, where as soon as you grab the power up, that's your new weapon and the old one is gone for good. You can't switch around, so you don't always want to get them. The S is the standard weapon you start with. It's a short range attack and a small projectile. No advantage over any other weapon, so I don't know why you would ever pick it up in any situation, including if you already have it. The FB is for fireballs, also short range, but the projectiles are a little bigger. The F is for flamethrower. It's a short stream of fire, but holding it down will give off a continuous stream in front of you for a bit. It's pretty handy. And lastly is the L for laser. It's a long range string of lasers and the primary weapon to go for. None of them seem to have any advantage as far as power goes. They all kill off the regular enemies with one shot each, but they do have differences in projectile size and range, which especially comes in handy with the bosses as you'll find yourself keeping your distance a lot and the hit detection is a dickhead. Other items include the question mark icon, which awards you with a point bonus every time. Why it's a question mark is ironically anyone's guess. And the W is a warp that will shoot you elsewhere on the map. It usually doesn't really create a huge shortcut for time attacks, but if you miss a comrade or two, it could save you from running out of time. The soundtrack blows. It's very mundane and sounds like it was rushed, especially since it's the same damn song in each stage, minus the final stage plus the boss battles. The stages could have also used some variety. Although the designs are different enough, all the enemies in each level are the same. I mean, they change from stage to stage, but in each particular level, there's only one kind of alien you have to worry about. And they're all pretty generic. Half the time, they don't even shoot anything at you, so they just give chase. So most of them just present the problem of getting in your way and slowing you down, so you run out of time. Most of the time, your best bet is to simply avoid enemies rather than shooting them, as they're more inclined to waste your time, unless, of course, they get in your way. It's not like you have to ignore all the enemies to make it on time. You just don't want to kill all of them, or you will run out of time. They're usually not that hard to kill. The bosses are usually tough to beat due to the shitty hit detection. It seems like breathing the same air as your enemy will get you killed, and your gunshots won't always register a hit when it really feels like it should, so neither side works to your advantage. They're not the only hazards though, as you can fall down pits that you would expect would just be spots you couldn't walk any further. But nope, you can fall through, so be careful there. 
you can't access a map screen at will by pausing the game or anything. But there are maps on some of the walls that you can use to track your location and where all the remaining comrades you have to rescue. And there's a constant head count of how many comrades are left at the top of the screen. So if you're stuck, you can at least figure out how to get out of it without having to wander aimlessly. So despite the fact that it sounds like I just spouted out mostly negativity, keep in mind that this isn't a bad game. It just has its issues. It has a cool concept, it's relatively fun, and there's a healthy tension trying to beat the clock. But the execution could have been better. So the first stage is set up like a contorted 8 pattern with 3 compartments here. You start off in the middle one, so you want to grab the first comrade right away and then work your way around the perimeter this way. You're going to have to enter this door and skew off your route at some point anyway, so it might as well be the last place you go before hitting up the exit to the far north. The enemies you'll encounter are these purple shrimp blobs that slowly twirl around and fire balls, also slowly, so neither are that difficult to avoid or shoot. You can grab some points right away at the beginning. Then there's the standard gun downgrade in the southwestern corner if it tickles your fancy for who knows what reason. A fireball and some points in the south center. A flamethrower in the southeastern corner along with the laser. And then there's another laser in the northeast section of the southern wall of the small room as well as a warp inside the room which takes you to the other small room to the west. Not exactly a huge leap. In the northeast corner, there's some more points, as well as two more bags of points on the outside and inside of the small room in the northwest, and finally another fireball pack in the northwest corner. The maps are all here in these spots. Not that you really needed to know the layout since, well, I'm displaying it for you right here, but you may have lost track of where you are specifically and need the you are here indicator, or perhaps you want to see where the remaining comrades are located. The boss is a reject from Total Recall, a head protruding out of a giant brain that shifts about and shoots small red shrimp kebabs, as well as some balls. The balls travel faster than the shrimp, so keep your eye on those more as you avoid everything, keeping a safe enough distance to see shit coming at you, but also close enough so you can land your attacks if you have a short range weapon. The laser is always preferred. Shoot at the brain when it opens up to attack, that's the only time it's vulnerable. Eventually, it'll break down into its second form, just the head, but it transforms into a parasite and lunges forward at a pretty fast rate. Stand back and rush in only to attack if you have a short range weapon, and retreat quickly to avoid the inevitable strike. Once again, the laser is highly preferred due to its long range, along with every other boss in this game really. You can stand back farther with it, it's not nearly as dangerous. Once you take it out, it's on to round two. This stage is generally wide open. There are a few rooms on the east side, and one large room in the southeast corner, but the rest is just a big open area, save for the random walls, pits, and pillars here and there. You start out dead center, just like last round. And just like last round, you've got a comrade right away. From here, head down south and clear the way of comrades. There's one south central, one southwest, and then two over in the southeast corner. Then head north and grab one in each of the rooms along the east coast, plus one in the northeast corner, one north central between these walls near the exit, one over by the pit as you get to the northwest corner to grab the last one, and then head for the exit up north. The enemies you'll encounter are these ugly ass purple aliens that don't really do anything except walk around, although they can hold their strength in numbers. Also there are a ton of spots in the ground where it opens up for them to pop out from. Needless to say, you don't want to be anywhere near these weird mouth pods. Like most enemies in the game though, you'd rather just ignore these pricks and concentrate on your path. You have fireball upgrades at the center and over west, a flamethrower southwest, a laser way out east, some points in these five spots, and your standard weapon northeast for god knows what reason. Plus a warp in the northeast district that'll take you to the northernmost room of the three along the eastern wall. There are six maps scattered about in these locations. The boss is this glob of shit pink alien that shifts around a bit and fires projectiles in a circular pattern around itself. Keep a safe distance and fire at Pinky when it expands to its full size. That's when it's vulnerable. Blast away at the red ball things when they pop out of the top. They glide around and follow you, but you can at least destroy those. The regular circular ones act as a shield and you can't shoot through them. After enough hits, it'll morph into its second form. A larger version that spits out a spread shot of shit downward plus its regular glidey things out of its ass. Stay to the side of it. You don't want to be underneath it as you'll have to take on its attacks head on. 
you're much better off just staying by its side and picking it off from here, unless you're just running out of time. You do get more attack opportunities from the front line as you're aiming for the mouth. After wiping it out, you're on to round three. The third round is one of the more eccentrically designed stages of the game. You got a path that makes up the entirety of the perimeter and narrow bridges that take you all over the place, including dead ends and interconnections to other areas. Without the aid of a map, you're likely to find yourself confused as to where the hell you are. You start off in the center, as usual, and although this is a clusterfuck, you've got three comrades in this area to rescue, so you're already a quarter of the way in a matter of about 15 seconds. Then head out the only path you can and head west, rescuing this comrade and grabbing a fireball power-up if you see fit. From here, turn back around and head east, picking up your buddies as you go along, working your way around the perimeter and taking turns on the bridges only from the eastern side of the perimeter. When you get up north, you have two left, one on each corner of the northwest and northeast. It really doesn't matter which one you get first, and then hit the exit up north once you get them both. The enemies in this stage are these green creepy crawlers that move around quicker than enemies of past levels, and they occasionally spit projectiles. There are also a lot of areas to fall down pits, so watch the edges. Aside from the fireball I mentioned in the southwest corner, there's also one up north near the exit. There are two lasers up the eastern wall, four pointed icons in these locations, a flamethrower up in the north center, and your standard weapon if you're a masochist. There are three maps in the southwest, southeast, and north respectively, plus a warp in the northwest that takes you to the southeast. The boss is this monstrosity of eyeballs. Your target is the red pair in the middle that disjoins itself from the big blue blob body and circles around in opposite directions before returning. It would be easy as pie, but complicating matters are these little squiggly things that slowly move towards you. Keep them at bay first and then take shots at the eyes when you have an opening. And there's no second form to deal with. Once you clear it, you're halfway done. Round 4 has a much more symmetric and easy to navigate layout than its predecessor. There are four quadrants with a capital I shaped corridor in the middle that connects to all of them. The enemies are these purple globs. They move around and spit projectiles at you. Not a lot different to say from the last stage's antagonists. Just avoid the little circular shaped trap doors they emerge from. Start off at the bottom of the eye corridor, which makes it even easier to decide that you want to clear the bottom half first. So clear the two southern quadrants first. It really doesn't matter which one you do first, although the laser is in the southwest quadrant. There are three comrades in this one, plus one just outside the door to it. And on the southeast side, there are two comrades in the quadrant, plus one on the outside door, plus a fireball and standard weapon if you decide you have a death wish. After that, scale through the eye corridor, nab the comrade in the center, and then clear the northwest quadrant. There are two comrades in here, plus a flamethrower, laser, and a warp that takes you to the last room in the northeast. So you might as well take it since there's nothing you need in the corridor in between. Clear this quadrant. The last two comrades are in there, plus some points if you decide you want some of that. Also, the exit to the boss is here, so giddy up. Here you battle this odd looking creature with a krang like brain head. It won't move around, but it teleports to another area before spitting out flames every once in a while. But the main hazards are the fireballs that come out from the right side of the screen. Get them out of your way and attack the head. After enough hits, it's all she wrote. Round 5 is pretty symmetric too. There are mainly four rooms to the north, south, east, and west respectively, with the two middle rooms conjoined via doors. The entry points are very specific though. Each room only has one door and they're not uniform either, so it's easier to get lost than it looks. You start out dead center, as usual, and all the comrades are spread out to basically one per room, so you have to essentially go everywhere. First take care of the north, so slip up and grab each of them. Then head to the door to the western room and save the two in here. Then backtrack and save the four down south, saving the one in the southeast for last so you can head into the eastern room on your way and save the remaining two on your way to the exit. The enemies are these brown slimy cock and balls that slither around. They don't shoot projectiles but they do move fairly quickly and they also gang up on you, which is compounded by these random vaginas that open up in the floor spewing more of these pricks out. Bizarre visual indeed. There are no distinguishing marks on the floor or anything to cue you as to where these vaginas open, so you have to just keep an eye out and avoid them like the plague once they do appear. 
You've got fireballs to the north and southwest, lasers in the southern sections of both the eastern and western rooms, respectively, a flamethrower in the southern room points out the ass, and your standard weapon in the northeast corner in case you want to downgrade your weapon. There are also maps in the north and eastern rooms, one on the outside of the western room toward the south end, and one in the little area in the center, and a warp in the center that takes you to the exit room. The boss is this ugly ass flying creature, who spits out flaming extraterrestrial sperm and occasionally lunges its mouth forward, another borrowed piece from the Alien franchise. The sperms come in chunks of three from the mouth that rests on top of its head. I know what I just said. This is also your target. There will also be some standalone spermies from the top of the screen, so watch out for all of them and blast through them if they're in front of you. Even though the head mouth is your target, you don't want to stand directly underneath due to the oncoming bullshit. In particular the mouth lunge because you can't shoot it out of your way like the sperms. You can time it though, as there'll be two semen spits before its lunge attack, but you won't get a lot of hits in anyway due to all the obstructions. So I say attack from a downward diagonal angle. If you're right alongside it, you'll run the risk of making contact, not to mention that you'll lose reaction time from the overhead shit. After enough hits, you'll move on to the final stage. Round 6 is a putrid looking clusterfuck of a level, but it is pretty linear, so long as you don't miss any comrades, then backtracking can cost too much time to make up for. You start off in the southwest corner. Grab your buddies in these spots as you go along. The one spot you'll have to veer off track a bit will be down here in the southeast corner where you'll have to come back a bit, but it's not that big a deal, and the exit is up here in the middle. Like I said though, backtracking blows cause there's no interconnecting paths from one section to the other aside from the one linear trail, so make sure you grab everyone and consult your maps if need be. There's one right here at the very beginning, one way up north, one deep in the southeast corner, and one right up against the exit. There are lasers in the northwest corner and far east coast, fireballs to the north and southeast sections, a flamethrower in the northeast corner, points in the southwest where you begin and four of them near the exit, and your standard weapon up the west coast in case you have brain damage. There's also a warp in the southwest corner near the map that'll take you five feet back where you came from, which is pointless. Even a bullshit warp that takes you to the earliest part of the stage would actually serve a purpose in this level, because then if you miss something it would be easier to backtrack via warp than trekking your way all the way to the back. The enemies in the stage are these cornucopias of intestines or some shit. They move around fairly quickly and shoot projectiles, nothing vastly different from what we've seen already. Blast them if they get in your way. The boss is this crawly bastard with a brain in the center. It bounces around slowly and fires off little kidney bean aliens. Keep a reasonable distance and line yourself up with the brain as it lands and blasts away, knocking the kidneys out of your way in the process. It can land in a lot of places, but it does move slowly, so position yourself so you line up with the brain and blast it to hell. Once it's destroyed, you've cleared the sixth round, but you do have one more boss battle. It's a giant brown monstrosity with a green brain and a blue head floating around it. The monstrosity spits out projectiles while a blue head circles it. This reminds me a lot of that creature from Gorf. You only have your shitty standard weapon, since this technically is a new round and there are no upgrades, but all you have to do is keep a safe enough distance to the left and give the blue head a shot as it passes by. Since this is the main target, there's no need to stand in front and take on the firepower from there. After enough shots, you'll have cleared the game and get an epilogue cutscene of our heroes, Ricky and Mary, those are their names by the way, who embrace after completing their mission and saving the world. Although the door is left open for a sequel hinting that the alien race trillions of light years away may return for vengeance. And this sequel did surface in 2007 for the PSP and the Wii, titled Alien Syndrome. Great naming update, I guess they drew inspiration from Peter Gabriel in this one. After that, the credits roll and the game is officially over. And that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.